<coughs> Just a reminder before we get started, um, the uh, listening to the Adhan is not an obligation. And um, if you were to go ahead and pray your Sunnah while the Adhan is going on, no problem. There's no, no conflict here. Insha'Allah. And so can we have everybody kind of move in a little bit tight here? Because we're probably going to get a packed house. So let's try and every time just go ahead and sit really close to your, uh, your brother and sister in Islam. Don't be shy. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina ma yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa ma yudlilhu falahadiyala wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ballagha al-risala wa adda al-amana wa nasaha al-umma وجاهد في الله حق المجاهدة حتى أتاه لقيم ونصلي عليه في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين أصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل كما جاء في محكم التنزيل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We are all blessed with so many countless favors and blessings. So as we breathe in the breath of life and as we take in the guidance of our scripture, we praise an abundant praise towards our beloved Creator. And we recognize that the most cherishable gift that He has offered mankind is guidance. In that He sent His revelation to prophets throughout history and favored those prophets with miraculous deeds and lives and impact upon the people whom they live around. And for us, we have the preserved message as it was taught by the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. No one can be led astray who has embraced that guidance. Anyone who has the arrogance of the heart to reject guidance, whichever prophet they rejected, you will not find guidance for that person until something in their heart changes to embrace the truth that they have come to see. And so we declare and bear witness that there is no deity. Nothing shall be worshipped other than God alone. And we bear witness and declare that Muhammad the son of Abdullah who lived a miraculous life and struggled and strived and sacrificed so that we could all be sitting here today. He was the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent so that mankind could know the light of guidance and that they could be removed from the darkness of human ego and materialistic desires. Today I want to talk to you about the reality of excellence. We should all strive for excellence, trying to achieve the best that I can achieve. So there is a concept as Muslims that we strive to attain, and that is Al-Ihsan. Al-Ihsan. We know the famous hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ was approached by the angel Gabriel. And some of his companions were very confused at this very tall, pale-faced man with clothing that seemed to have not been touched by uh, the effects of travel. Because he's not looking like any Arab they ever saw. And he asked the Prophet ﷺ, tell me about Islam. What does it mean that someone declares submission to God? He said, they say there is no deity, nothing worthy worship except for God and Muhammad is his messenger. They make their declaration of faith confirming prophethood according to the eternal uh, faith that has always been known since Adam and Eve through many uh, prophets on earth which is 
أن يعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت ما لكم من إله غيره that you should worship God alone and stay away from polytheistic tendencies and evil corruptive deeds so that is the basis of Islam once somebody has that then they begin to pray regularly five times a day that's their submission zakat they give out of their wealth the almsgiving they fast the month of Ramadan to gain self-discipline and God consciousness and they go to the pilgrimage once in their life to remember the great covenant of Abraham and how that was finally actualized through the Ishmaelite lineage that Muhammad sallallahu was revealed through that's Islam so then Gabriel said tell me what is faith what is the true reality of faith that you believe in the perfection and the pure absolute oneness of God that you believe in the angels that they are the servants of God and they do his uh, command throughout the universe that you believe in scripture that he has a message he's been sending mankind and that he sent that message to various prophets across the earth that you believe in human accountability that every person is consciously aware of their actions and they are aware of right and wrong and a covenant that was innately inherently embedded in them and that they recognize that through revelation and they should live the life uh, accordingly and so on the day of judgment they'll be accountable and then the absolute will and knowledge and omniscience of God what we call al-qadr divine decree so that's the faith the Prophet ﷺ told Angel Gabriel and then he said what is excellence what is excellence what is ihsan he said according to one narration that you're worshiping God as though you can see him but if you couldn't see him it is a, that you know that he is watching you because obviously we can't see God and so that is the summary of the Prophet ﷺ. Ihsan is a word that is rooted in a three letter root as is 90% of all Arabic words Ha Seen Noon and this root is basically intrinsically denoting beauty beauty and the opposite is obviously ugly interestingly enough in both the English and the Arabic lexicons of the word beauty and the word ugly the reality of appearance is paralleled with the reality of actions isn't that interesting so in the Quran beauty is being encouraged as a way of life and as a standard of character 165 times at least once on every four pages of the 600 page Quran there is some command and encouragement to a level of goodness and excellence and beauty of character and self and representation of one's reality so the synonyms if you go looking on thesaurus.com it's interesting some of the synonyms of beauty kindness to be generous to be gentle refinement what do we call tazkiyat to nafs we call that character refinement it is to remove those things which make you not so beautiful as a person that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says ma kana rifqu fi shay'in illa zana anytime someone is gentle and kind then that will beautify and adorn that person and when somebody is harsh and rude and not gentle and kind then it makes them ugly it defaces them shana to deface something to take away its beauty so it's interesting how languages are similar in that our language understands this thing very similarly in the relationship to appearance and actions so then finally the word goodness or excellence is also 
a synonym, a muradif of the word beauty in English. Antonyms or synonyms of ugly, antonyms of beauty, offensive, to be offensive, rude, harsh, arrogant, shameful, immoral, to be immoral is ugly. Interestingly enough, a lot of people who are trying so hard to be pretty or hot or cute are actually, actually, according to the reality of morality known since the beginning of mankind, are quite ugly and shameful. It's interesting when, when we look at the secular interpretation of beauty as opposed to the spiritual understanding uh, of beauty. And the last one is very interesting, and this is a, a lesson for all of us. Plain. Plain is an antonym, or crude, is an antonym of beauty. Meaning to just be an average person. We should not seek to have an average standard. Whether it be your health, whether it be your way of dress, whether it be your character and your manners or your worship. We should not just try to squeak by. We're seeking excellence. That is what the Prophet ﷺ said was the highest level of faith, Al-Ihsan, it's excellence. It's something that any right-minded, spiritually aware, logical person would strive to. I'm not just going to uh, pray my five prayers, rather I'm going to do like the Prophet and the Great Companions I'm going to add some sunnah prayers, I'm going to take my own free time out stepping outside of the obligation in order to raise my spiritual worth instead of giving that thousand bucks that I'm kind of holding on to I'm going to go ahead and give two thousand dollars for the cause, seeking ex excellence so we should not seek to be a plain person. We should seek to be excelling in everything we do to the best of our ability. So I think that is the best translation for Al-Ihsan, excellence. And when excellence is referring to spirituality, as the Prophet ﷺ alluded to, it's referring to what we call muraqaba or taqwa, God consciousness. To be constantly thinking, what I'm doing, God is watching me. He's my creator. He has provided me with everything. He is the one that gives me life and gives me a purpose. And so I should strive to do the thing that makes him most content with me. This is Ihsan, that you are worshipping him knowing that he is watching, watching you. So we call that in English virtue. Virtue. When it's referring to character, when Ihsan is referring to character, it is talking about beneficence or Rahmah. To give out of yourself to those around you even though they don't necessarily deserve it or they didn't ask for it. But you're going to sacrifice for the well-beings of others. Mercy, compassion. And when it refers to ability, Itqan, proficience. Proficient to, to perfect something. If you're going to do something as a Muslim, either in Allah yuhibbu ida amila ahadukum amanan an yutqina. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that if any one of you did something, you perfected it to your human capacity. For somebody to just try to get by in life in whatever they're doing, or to just try to do the thing that they're doing to meet the status quo. This is not the character of a Muslim. We have to strive to excellence in what we do. We have to seek a higher level. We have to raise the bar. And that was historically what made our Ummah great. Our nation was respected for a high standard of justice and application of law throughout history as Lamartine, the famous French atheist, therefore objective uh, historian. Because unfortunately many people on the other side of missionary work, when they write history down or do orientalist studies, they're picturing their competitor as no good. But Lamartine, the French historian, 
basically said it was not the sword that caused so many nations to embrace and so many lands of the world to embrace Islam. Rather, it was the beautiful system of justice that was blind to culture or even creed in which non-Muslims would have their rights and be so amazed at how a Muslim leader like Omar would judge in favor of Christian people who were oppressed at the hands of Muslims who see themselves with the upper hand and going over their right from their neighbors because of Ihsan would make us not just seek average justice as the common people of the world rather we raise our status please we need to move in tightly so alhamdulillah I requested this earlier you guys are still this far apart inshallah khair these are your brothers in Islam no problem to touch shoulders we pray like that all the time So as a standard from now on, let's go ahead and make sure that we have, oh, is there any reason for this space here? <laughs> so one thing that we have to understand is the reason why God has revealed so many characteristics about Himself to us. So that we could know how to be close to Him and how to live a life that is of Him, how to be godly people. So, God is known as Al Muhsin in the Arabic language, as is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet. This means that He excels in His goodness to us past justice. Every human being, a lot of people don't understand how God could forgive people who do so much evil and corruption. But when they repent and have a sincere intention to serve Him and honestly know they have done wrong and feel bad about it and they know that He is the merciful, loving, compassionate one of excellence towards His servants, then He will forgive us. That's His nature. It always has been. It never changed. And so he is overflowing with his favors to us and he has never done one atom of the universe the least bit of wrong. He has never done wrong to the least bit. He is muhsinun ila khalqihi. He is taking care of everything with the highest standard of excellence. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Azza wa Jal. So the hadith, it basically says, the Prophet ﷺ has told us, إِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُحْسِنٌ يُحِبُّ الْإِحْسَانِ So it says, if you're going to judge, remove your emotions, remove your cultural inclinations, remove any sort of corruption from your decision-making process and judge with complete absolute justice between the two parties. And if you're going to talk or say something to someone, then say something very good and beneficial and valuable and positive to the best of your ability. Because why? Because God is the perfection of excellence and He loves those that strive for that quality. God is Alim, He is omniscient, and He loves those who seek knowledge that is beneficial to them. And the opposite is true. When you know He's Alim, and you don't seek to increase your knowledge, then you're moving yourself away from Him. You see, that's why He's revealing this to you. Inna Jamilun, wa yuhibbul jamal. He's beautiful and He loves beauty. Many of the ulama historically uh, responded to some of the Muslims who wanted to carry themselves in a lowly, when they had the means to buy nicer clothes and to keep themselves nicer, but they thought they're looking pious. So they said, no, inna Allah jamilun yuhibbul jamal, inna Allah yuhibbu an yara athara ni'matihi alayk, according to the authentic hadith, that he likes to see the effects of his blessing upon you and sustenance. So when you have the means to get some better way of whether it be the scent that you have or the clothing or the way you keep yourself, 
If you have the means to keep yourself in a high standard of hygiene and groom and things like that, then you should. That is piety because that is reflecting the nature of God who is indeed beautiful. And so he is perfecting his excellence, giving to people, taking care of them, going out of his way to, to make sure that every single one of his creations has what it needs. And so uh, for when we look at this trait of his, his perfection to us is amazing. Every single one of us, he willed us to exist. Did we do something to deserve to exist? No. Just that alone should make everyone want to struggle and strive to show the highest level of gratitude, love and loyalty towards their Creator and live a life of deep servitude and spiritual focus. Just that alone. But then after that, He has favored us with countless blessings, our sight, our hearing, our uh, families, our wealth. He has favored us with so much that if you try to count those favors, you will never be able to count them. He has subjugated the whole universe to us through material means and intellectual potential and capacity. If you look what humans can do with the world around them, He has subjugated to you, He's talking to mankind, everything in the universe. Somebody might say, well, what about all those stars? Well, historically, Muslim, human beings were using stars as a map to guide them wherever they're going in the earth, in the nighttime. So all those billions of stars with amazing mass and size bigger than our sun are there so that we can use them to find our way around. Subhanallah. That's his ihsan to us. And most importantly, He has guided us. We're not animals that just live on instinct. That is the struggle. That's Satan's call. Satan's call is to function on your instinct. For your egotistical self-desires, try to get your self-interests, to keep your wealth and your material gains, and to try to make this life that you're living in, this lowly, uh, flawed world of testing, to try to turn that into your heaven and the abode that you're so happy with and attached to. Like animals, they have instinct, survival of the fittest. I need something, I go after it. If I'm hungry, I try to eat whatever I can find. If I want a mate, I just find some lady and basically just go after her. Right? No morals, no anything. If I need to use the bathroom, I'm just going to use the bathroom right there in front of everyone. That's animals. We are people of morality. We are people of intellectual, spiritual awareness. And so we should seek to perfect our standing with Him in our knowledge, in our character, in our values, in the way we carry ourselves to reach a level of perfection and not be strayed from our focus on what we're doing in this life, which is simply proving towards our Lord in a test of this awareness that we have that we're using the bulk of our time in His service that we are doing our best to reflect His excellence to us and our excellence to those around us and establishing the greatness of His influence on mankind. So in a nutshell, Ihsan is using our time, our abilities and our wealth to help others, to make the world around us a better place. And that was summarized in a famous ayah of the Qur'an. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واعبدوا الله ولا تشركوا به شيئا وبالوالدين إحسانا وبذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين والجار ذي القربى والجار الجنب والصاحب بالجنب وابن السبيل وما ملكت أيمانكم إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا This ayah from Surah An-Nisa, it sums it up. Be in servitude towards your Lord and do not associate others with His perfection. He is the Muhsin by Himself alone. There is no other from His creation or from existence that has His qualities. 
and have ihsan, have excellence first and foremost towards your parents who are his primary means of giving you his excellence. He used your parents to give you everything that you had coming from a newborn and even before that up to growing up to be able to function on your own. For one to show the least bit of disrespect and dishonor to their parents is a huge disgrace to the ihsan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. Then he says, وَبِذِي uh, And your close family, Salatul Rahim. He decreed that your family members through your mother and father are people closest to you. So you owe them the highest level of excellence, of character, of giving, of sacrifice. And the poor people and the orphans and your neighbor who lives close to you and your neighbor who lives far from you. And when you travel, the people you're traveling with, you should have a huge level of sacrifice in the excellence of character for those people. And there's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ we're going to conclude with. The Prophet ﷺ, أَتَاهُ رُجُلٌ فَسَأَلَ النَّبِي Some man came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him a question. دُلَّنِي عَلَىٰ عَمَلٍ إِذَا عَمِلْتُهُ دَخَلْتُ الْجَنَّةِ let me know about an action that if I did it, I will go to heaven for sure. And he said, Kun muhsinan. Be a person of excellence. He says, Wa kayfa a'rufu annani muhsinun. How would I know that I am muhsinun? He said, Sal jiranak. Fa in qalu innaka muhsinun. Fa annaka muhsinun. Wa in qalu annaka musi'un. Fa innaka musi'un. If they said that you are a person of excellence and character, then you are as such. But if your neighbor said that you do bad things or they're bothered by you or they're not uh, impressed with your neighborhoodship, then you are not a good person and not on your way to Jannah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The famous hadith that many of us know from the, the Jibreel story, the angel Gabriel came to the Prophet Sallallahu and asked him these things. That hadith has been narrated with three different versions. One of them says, أَن تَعْمَلَ لِلَّهِ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَافَ إِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَافُ فَإِنَّهُ يُرَاكَ that you work for the cause of Allah as though He's watching you. How is any employee, how is any employee when the boss is watching you compared to when the boss is not there? How about the child who is told to clean their room when the parent is standing right there as opposed to when the parent goes back to doing whatever they're doing? It's a whole different scenario. When it, this life will end quicker than you can imagine. It is not a time to just try to slide through and coast by status quo, not very concerned about our spiritual reality. We're talking about eternity here. Let's hit the gas and become people of excellence. Right? Another narration says, And you should be in awe and fear of your responsibility in standing in front of God on the day of judgment as though He's watching you every step of the way. Before you say that thing, before you do that action, before you choose to hang around the people that you're hanging around that are not beneficial to you, before you choose to put that cigarette in your mouth, Make sure that you are thinking God is watching me and I'm responsible for everything that I do and I'm going to stand in front of Him responsible for everything in my life. In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, Islam is telling us to strive for excellence and to be muhsineen. Inna Allah ma'al muhsineen God is with those who struggle and strive for excellence. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. He loves those who struggle and strive for excellence. We must strive to be the spiritual and intellectual people that are devoted towards the service of our beloved Creator. Humble, penitent, kind, generous, good, compassionate, loving, forbearing, empathetic, selfless humanists. 
that is what we should be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support us in our struggle to attain these noble, lofty qualities and characteristics. We ask Him to help us to grow in our faith and our practice and our presentation of ourselves to the world as the light of His guidance that He has revealed to us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise amongst our youth leaders in a world that is given to immorality and raise the moral virtue of the world by their actions and character and example. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and weaknesses and to guide us all to the straight path and to send His peace, blessings and mercy upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa